St. Lucia, this is Off Mike, and we're now back to the second segment of our program. Uh, when we left off, um, Dominique was, I think, uh, offering us some sort of a rebuttal to the uh, members of the Tourist Board in respect to the uh, back and forth that went on yesterday. And um, I am hoping that this matter uh, is clearly understood now because I don't think, um, knowing Dominic as I do, he has any malicious ideas. He was just merely um, advising the nation as a, especially a minister in waiting of the situation because we have to learn to work together in this country and if something is going wrong, it's better to nip it in the bud than wait till it gets out of hand and then try to re redress it. Um, anyway, that having been said, I, I wanted to take a little time to elaborate on my pet subject, which is the situation of the, the VAT problem in St. Lucia. Um, I had a meeting yesterday with a, a very uh, well-known businessman, uh, unsuccessful businessman on the island, and he said to me, you know, Mr. Shastley, if the economy goes on at the rate it's moving, in the next five years, um, there'll be... It, that it, it would not be worth our while to remain in business. And I said to him, well, why? He said, well, you know, that, that situation has destroyed the economy. Now, it was interesting to hear that from a successful business person because I myself have had my ideas about the VAT for a longest while. And, you know, I have spoken and spoken about that VAT situation. But I want to make one more attempt to drive home to St. Lucia and the powers that be the situation with the VAT. Let me try and analyze it for those not wanting to listen. If you have an oil well and you're pumping oil, that's where you get your revenue from. In St. Lucia, we have several oil wells. The oil wells are the business people that turn over business to make it happen by way of employment and taxation. If those business persons start to fail, as they have failed already, what does it tell? It, is, it boils down to you blocking off the oil well. So when, when, when a business person fails, that is regarded as an oil well that has been cut off. So the revenue from that oil well dies. And in the process of it dying, it will take down many other businesses and people. Let me say something, Sam Rocha. I think we should get away from the criticism today that everybody is saying things are bad when they are better. Gentlemen, let us face the reality. You just walk around cast trees, or any part of St. Lucia for that matter, and find out what is going on. I was in Viewfort yesterday, and I was inundated with people looking for jobs, and people suffering. Now, you know something? I wasn't born yesterday. And the fact that there was a world recession does in fact impact on St. Lucia. But this, for four years now, the situation is getting worse. It is not getting better. We have to understand that. It cannot continue as it is because something is going to give. Now, I'm not one here today to say clearly that because of the economic situation, we have all that crime. Crime has always been in St. Lucia, okay? But the levels of crime is what we have to deal with. When you see ordinary people, I came, this morning, around 7 o'clock, I had a visit from a gentleman who has worked for me for a number of years, who had been quite successful. And when I listened to his side of the story, it was heartbreaking. Every time we say those things, they put me on t television and call me a liar, but it is going to come home to roost. There's something called constructive criticism. And we must, as a nation, listen to people who are talking. I have no benefit by going out and saying things are bad. Regarding the fact that my son's in politics, that's besides the point. Politics is just a profession like anybody else. If Alan feels he has a contribution to make, it is democratic right to move forward and do what he wants. And you have to isolate all those things. I've been in business for 60 years. I'm saying to St. Lucia, I have I had a relationship with Dr. Anthony, right? I've had a relationship with to Stevenson King. I had a relationship with John Compton. You know, and I have always voiced my opinion, but I don't like what is going on. 
So on that score, I'm just saying to St. Lucia, we need to get together and try to do something because the, the situation could get out of hand and incurable. Uh, Dominic, um, you heard what I said about the business side. You and the tourism field, what, what is going on? You, 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 you well, tourism has been a little better than the, um, than the, the rest of the business yeah, and community. And you know why? Because the business comes from abroad. Right. It's not locally. Uh, we have to wait till you bring the people here and they get the money for us to benefit. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it still has its frustrations. Mm -hmm. um, as it really, you mentioned the crime problem, that is a, a big problem. Uh, the rate of implementation to um, get investments planned and so on uh, is also a big irritation. Uh, the fact that hoteliers find it difficult to import uh, certain items um, when seasons are closed, like for example the lobster season and citrus and so, so on. So in the lobster um, season, you can't import sufficient. lobsters? Uh, I, I when the season is closed, you're not allowed to. Not, unless, not it is, to import. unless it is cooked. Yeah, that yeah. is my only, Unless it is cooked, you're not allowed to in, import um, the raw tails. Okay. Um, and the same for citrus as well. Mm -hmm. you know, but it's a big part of the visitor experience. Mm -hmm. and, and there are some irritations like that uh, within the sector. But we have to uh, continue to lobby so that things get right. Mm -hmm. And we have to um, look at the holistic development of the industry. Um, oftentimes, I don't like to talk about the hotels only, but I like to talk about all the players within the tourism industry, the, the, the craft vendors. Um, we often levy <coughs> criticism at them, but they play a significant contribution towards the development of this economy. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine if they didn't have the courage to go and start their businesses, to buy their products and to sell them? Yeah. But what they do need is a bit of help in uh, merchandising, in marketing, in um, association, and in a number of different things, so that they can do a much better job. Uh, they can perhaps employ more people so that their, their sales can go through, um, grow a, a bit more. Uh, that is a bit frustrating. Mm. The taxi drivers, mm. um, the role that they play uh, is enormous towards mm. the development of this industry. And, you know, uh, it seems like on that front things have not been good mm. um, and you know the taxi drivers are doing less trips that mm. is the reality and we have to do as much as we can to ensure that we have the numbers that we give the drivers the requisite training that they need and give them the resources the tools that they require uh, so that they can uh, do the best job that is possible yeah. within their the um, sphere of the industry. Now tell me something, Dominic. You're going up for the ANSI Canaries area, which is very um, depressed area for many years. Um, I've heard you made a couple comments about it there. What can you really do? Um, what plans have you got for the area to sort of take it out from the doldrums in which it is now? Yeah. Well, central to the uh, rebuilding of the constituency has got to be uh, the creation of an economy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think the previous reps, I'm not aware of reps coming and having a strong focus on the development of a sustained economy in Ansari. Uh, so we've got to use all the resources within the constituency for mm -hmm. tourism development, for the development of agriculture, because mm -hmm. the constituency, a big part of it is in a farming zone. You've got the Roso, Mondo, straight into um, Millet, uh, very big agricultural belt. And we need to beef that up. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to fix uh, the problems that farmers are having uh, to get some of their produce sold within the fair trade organization because uh, Winifresh is apparently um, importing, uh, buying bananas from places like Dominican Republic and selling under the Winfresh brand. Mm -hmm. But Winfresh represents the interests of farmers within the Windward Islands. Mm -hmm. So we've got to get this priority right um, so that farmers can, can do a lot better. Uh, we've got to find the good farmers and we've got to support them. There's a guy called Christopher Cox who does an amazing job. He's like a, a model farm in St. Lucia. And he is um, an idea of what farming can become. So agriculture linking with tourism mm -hmm. and also um, limited banana exports, not as much as we did when bananas were in the glory days, will play a pivotal role. But Anstorian Canneries is not short of opportunities for tourism development. In mm -hmm. fact, I am on record of saying that, that the West Coast will be the new frontier for tourism development mm -hmm. uh, because of the uninhabited beaches, the ridges, um, the scenic views, 
uh, and just the picturesque lands that they have um, that can be turned into tourism development. I think the case must be made so that in order to decentralize um, investment and to attract, it, encourage investors to go into these uh, stricken areas, that we should look at making them more of a special development area. Mm -hmm. And that should reflect in the, the fiscal incentives that you give. Um, in the American um, Citizen by Investment Program, mm -hmm. they actually have, um, in rural areas mm -hmm. that are underdeveloped, they actually have a, a special taxation mm -hmm. uh, policy um, so that investors would be attracted to going to develop those areas. So mm -hmm. it's a case to be made uh, so that we can spike the investment. Mm -hmm. The opportunity exists as well for us to review the, uh, the, the constituency development fund and how that is spent. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's shocking that, you know, I think the Taiwanese give somewhere in the region of 38 million, mm -hmm. and that is a very hefty figure. Mm -hmm. And if we use this um, properly, I think we can get a lot more out of it. Mm -hmm. What we have done is to disburse the um, Taiwanese development projects in a very fragmented way. So mm -hmm. I will say, okay, uh, Michael, you go and build um, a footpath, and you know, Junior, you go build a drain, and James, you go build a truck to someone's house. But we've never looked at or explored the potential mm -hmm. of saying, let's build a call center mm -hmm. and try to get a call center investor to come and create more long-term jobs right. and give the economy an immediate spike. Boost, yeah. So all of a sudden, uh, all of the hundreds of young people that are unemployed can be trained and put into jobs. The other thing that is key is that we have to have a human resource development center that could um, collaborate with NRDF and with uh, NSDC and also with uh, S South and Lewis Community College mm -hmm. so that we can do something about the skills in the constituency both from a vocational level and an academic level mm -hmm. so that we empower the people of ancillary canneries and other communities in the constituency uh, to compete for the best jobs in the island and we have to fix the roads as well so that they have access to the central commercial hubs in the north of the island the roads are in a deplorable state in the answer area that's right the mm -hmm. roads are a reflection mm -hmm. that the constituencies are forgotten they, they, they've been neglected yes forsaken Mm -hmm. And, you know, in the last 20 years, the Labour Party administration actually um, held the seat and, and the government for 15 out of those years. Mm -hmm. And if I had to lay the blame, it's only fair mm -hmm. that it is laid at the feet of the government that was responsible for the development of the constituency for most of the 75 percent of the period of its recent hist history. Mm -hmm. And that is a fact. Um, so we have to now uh, give the people hope, we have to inspire them, we need to make them believe that they can do it. And we need to end this neglect and this unforsaken and underdeveloped state. They're mm -hmm. playing fields that are in a deplorable state, but a lot of sporting talent that mm -hmm. could be harnessed for export overseas. And as well, uh, to enhance the pride of St. Lucia, to play and represent uh, the national team in greater numbers and valor than mm -hmm you know, there is representation from Ancillary now. St. Lucia, this is Open Mic, and now we have come to the end of the second segment of our program. In my other two segments, I will have Mr. Guy Mears, who will be discussing some other issues. So, we'll be back shortly. <laughs>